The first part of this video, uh, well, eventually I'll get to the etching on the metal, shows how I get the images for the vinyl templates. And what you see now is I have Photoshop open, and I've opened a 12 inch by 12 inch square to work from because that's the size of template that Cameo uses is 12 by 12 inches. So I'm more familiar with Photoshop, so I use it to put together um, the template using Photoshop brushes, which is what the image is from, and uh, using text, having downloaded free fonts from the internet. Um, but there's a whole variety. Really, any image that you find on the internet, you can copy and paste into Photoshop and use it. I've saved that as a JPEG, and I'm now opening the Silhouette Cameo software. And I'm finding that Photoshop image, and I'm bringing it into Silhouette here. I'm making it smaller so that it fits their 12 by 12 inch square. That's the grid that you see there on the screen. So I'm just resizing the Photoshop JPEG to the same size as the cutting mat, which is 12 by 12 inches. And I'm now highlighting the area that I want it to trace. And I clicked on trace. And now I'm going over to the cutting portion and telling it that I want it to cut and then I'm using vinyl. There are videos on all of that kind of stuff that you can find. Uh, you definitely want to use Oracle 651 vinyl. It's the only thing I've found that actually holds up and is strong enough to withstand the salt and vinegar solution um, and the uh, electricity. So here's, a, uh, here's the cutting mat for the silhouette and here's a 12 by 12 inch piece of vinyl uh, black. I find that black makes it easiest to see where the cuts have been made so that you can peel them off. I'm uh, loading that into the silhouette cutter and now I'm telling it to go ahead and cut it and that's what it's doing. So it's cutting only the layer of vinyl. It's not cutting the backing of the vinyl, just the top layer of the vinyl itself. So it's going to do this and uh, I normally fill up a full sheet here of graphics and images to use uh, the, uh, the vinyl as best as I can and most efficiently but here I've just put the one image and uh, peel this off that's a sticky mat so that mat holds it holds vinyl on there and that's why I put the protective cover back on it and now I can take the vinyl and I'm going to take a pair of tweezers and uh, go where I ha can sit comfortably and have some good light and then take the tweezers and begin to peel off the areas of the vinyl that I want the etching um, to uh, go into. So that top graphic there, the white part where I've peeled away the vinyl and where I'm peeling away the lettering, that's where I'm going to etch. I'm going to put that on the metal and the etching is going to go through the white part and only etch those parts for me. Um, uh, again, I've tried lots of vinyl. This is the only vinyl that really is tough enough uh, to do this and that doesn't leave sticky residue on your metal when you peel it off. Uh, now this is galvanized uh, sheet metal here. You can get it really cheaply at Home Depot or any variety of places here. Um, I have a place called Metal Mart. They have all kinds of scrap. This is pretty cheap. A, a size uh, of metal like this, which is probably about two and a half feet by two feet. And I'm just taking the uh, sanding belt and I just sand it because it gives it a shiny aluminum kind of look and it removes any residue that might be on the metal. So it gives me a nice clean surface. Um, I'm heading down to my studio here where I'm actually going to do the etching. So there's my work table and a variety of <clears throat> tools that I use. But I'll be very specific in what I'm using here to uh, etch the metal so you know exactly what to get. Um, I'm using an old car battery charger. It's about 15, 20 years old. You'll see that. Uh, there it is. Uh, I'm going to cut out uh, these parts here so I can move them around, put them where I want on the metal here. Um, I've tried new battery chargers and they don't work because they have electronic rather than medical or medical rather than mechanical mechanisms. And uh, so they have circuitry in there that prevents it from uh, turning on when both of the uh, diodes are attached to the metal, but the old mechanical ones don't. So you might need to find an older version of a car charger. This is white vinegar, and I'm just pouring an amount, no specific amount in there, just probably half of or less. 
and salt, just standard table salt. And I'm just dumping some in. Again, I don't measure it. Um, I just want to be sure it's salty and I do what I can to mix it up and have it get dissolved or have it dissolve in the vinegar here and get that part started. Uh, once I do that, you're going to use this. Uh, these are just little strips here of t-shirts that I've cut and it's going to go onto <clears throat> a piece of copper tubing that I have flattened the end of it and I'll just put a rubber band around that uh, stuff and then I will put the negative or the black charge on that copper pipe with the cotton uh, t-shirt on the end of it. Uh, next thing you want to do is you want to use this stuff called uh, transfer paper. You can get it at Michael's or any craft store. This is different than contact paper. Uh, it's a little bit more like post-it note stickiness as opposed to contact stickiness because I need it to peel off. So then you peel off the back end of the vinyl here and again you <clears throat> want to be careful because there's uh, bits and pieces that have been cut out and they may come off on the transfer paper. So, so that's what I'm doing with that little tool. I'm just holding down parts of the vinyl that might pull up with this transfer paper. Uh, once you do that and everything's set, you can turn this over and now you're going to stick it where you want it on the metal. And again, just kind of use your hand to rub it down, rub the vinyl, get it stuck onto the metal there. And then you're going to pull this vinyl or this transfer paper off and it will leave the vinyl there with your graphic or with your wording. You can use this transfer paper uh, probably five or six times before it really loses its stickiness. So I put it back on a backing and then put it to the side to use. And I'm just using a, um, a tongue depressor here, um, a wood tongue depressor, and I'm just burnishing around the vinyl to get it pressed against the steel. Um, I want it to really be stuck on there because uh, once I start using the, um, the other stuff, uh, now these are old pieces of from the backs of vinyl and a variety of things. Um, you want to cover all the rest of the metal here. This is masking tape all the way around. Otherwise you're going to get splatters that get onto uh, the metal where you don't want it. And because this is quite wet, um, the vinegar and the salt will, will edge over into the metal off the vinyl and it will begin to stain uh, the metal. So. Uh, I kind of learned the hard way. You need to make sure that you've created a border that is sealed all the way around it with masking tape. So, um, and use this paper here with the shiny backing because it uh, tends to be a little waterproof. And then you've protected all the rest of the material here. So once that is done, I'm just mixing up the solution here one more time. And uh, now it's ready to start. I'm getting a stool because you're going to be sitting here doing this for a bit. And so you'll connect um, the red terminal, the positive, to the sheet metal itself. I have my battery charger plugged into this power strip, so I can just click the power strip on and off, and it will just click this, uh, this on and off. So the red is clicked to the metal, and the black that has the uh, cotton swab on it gets uh, swished around inside the vinegar and salt. Turn on the battery charger and just press it against um, all the openings, so all the letters or your graphic. Um, I typically hold it there for probably about, my best guess is 10 to 15 seconds or so, maybe a little bit longer than that. Um, the longer you do, the deeper the etch uh, happens to be. Um, so I'm just really kind of going over this whole thing. I keep re-dipping it into the bowl as need be. The, the more liquid, the better, really. Um, the electricity goes through that. And uh, now I'm just wiping it off with a, a damp cloth because obviously there's salt and, and vinegar on it. I'm using this Tim Holtz alcohol ink, um, and I will uh, put that on it. And it gives me, uh, the, this one is a lime green, so it makes it look um, kind of aged. And it also makes sure that everything got covered well. Um, so pull that off, and then you just pull off the vinyl. And then pick apart the insides of the letters that didn't come off until it's all done. And once you do that, it's really, it's finished. It's complete. And now you could do the rest of it with a variety of other graphics.